Howdy, friends. Just a bear. Just an old co-owner of a humble fungus. A mushroom farm in Lafayette, Colorado. Anyway, back with another hard-hitting video. This time, I'm actually going to talk about mushroom mycelium. Uh, so, a uh, question we get a lot is about contamination. How do you, what do you look for? What do you worry about? Um, but one of the things I've learned growing uh, is that fungi kind of do their own thing. Uh, and given it enough time and patience, generally the fungus wins. Uh, so, that being said, uh, let me kind of walk you through some of the mycelial uh, stuff I've got sitting in front of me. So, first I wanted to show, uh, like, is this contaminated? Like, would you throw away this thing if it was in your grow? So, first thing I've got right here. See all that yellow and orange? Would you throw this away? The answer is no. Because... That is actually a morel. Now, if you look at that mycelium here in the liquid culture, you can see it's got that same orange color, that same orange tint. And that's because morel mycelium, uh, when it's colonizing, it goes through three stages of colonization. First, it colonizes typical white hypo growth. Then it turns yellow and darkens to a, an orange and hardens. That's called, uh, if I remember correctly, this La Rocha, and it's basically fireproof. Um, so that block is not contaminated. What about, say, this bat? Is that, that's grain spawn. That doesn't look right at all, right? Wrong. Again, it's morel. It's just what morel looks like. It's kind of trippy. So... Let's see here. What's another good example? Is this contaminated? Look at that. It's got black and it looks gross as sin, right? Looks like it's not bubbled. No. Uh, come to find out, uh, Agaricus bisporus, which is what that is, kind of looks nasty. It looks gross, uh, even plated. Uh, if it starts to overgrow, it kind of looks gross. It's not a it's not a pretty mycelium. It's got a lot of black. It's got stuff that is going on. Um... This is another example. This is a pink oyster. This is a pink oyster fruiting block. Its bottom isn't fully colonized yet, but you can see, oh no, there's a liquid. What's this? Um, is this contamination? No. That's uh, what's commonly known as mike piss, or mycelium pee, -pee. Uh, What that is, is a liquid that starts to be excreted by the fungus uh, as it consumes its way through the substrate. Uh, it's relatively harmless, but too much of it, and you can get a bacterial infection. And I'll show you that next. This is an example of the of a different fruiting block, but this one is another pink oyster, and this one has a bacterial infection. Right here. I've circled it so you can see it. Now, this block. This has a bacterial infection right here. So I've got a pretty good guess that if I were to fruit this as is right now, it would pretty much contaminate, like it'd probably pop trike or blue-green mold in about two, three days. Um, but this spot is just so happens to be in the grain bag that I had. In the bottom, there are a bunch of metabolites and it had pooled at the bottom, creating kind of like this biological soup of Mike PP. Uh, and I didn't discard it when I was casting the spawn, which is another technique you can use. If you've got a bag like this that maybe is like got a bunch of metabolites in the bottom, when you're spawning it to bulk, just don't use the stuff at the bottom. Anyways, so this block is infected. I don't want to sell it. I don't want to fruit it right now. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put it back in the tent, leave it in the dark, and I'm going to see if the pink oyster wins this fight. If the pink oyster colonizes this, this, this spot, then I'll fruit it normally. If it doesn't in about a week or two, I'll actually take this home and put it in my garden and let it fruit outside. 
So, another question. Is this contaminated? This is a great big brain master. It looks nasty, right? This is not morel. I'm not tricking you. But what is this? This is chestnut fungus. And chestnut fungus, if you were to buy a fruiting block from us, uh, looks very similar to this. In other words, chestnut fungi, when they're really happy and they're fully colonized, will do a secondary colonization that turns it into this weird brown, kind of like weird bleeding color. Shiitake do the same thing, shiitake brown. Um, they turn this weird molten kind of gold lava it's brown. It's beautiful. Anyways, that's not contaminated. When you're looking for contamination, you're looking for colors, right? You're looking for blue, green, blue, green. Um, you're looking for a uh, white cotton ball, like big, fluffy, weird cotton looking cotton ball things, or um, black. Black is a common one, that's black mold. Uh, it's everywhere as aspergillus, something or other. Uh, it's everywhere, just accept it in your heart. Um, got an example here on a plate. I'm gonna have to clean this plate up. It's actually got a bunch of uh, great mycelium right here, but then <coughs> aspergillus colony. So, that's all about contam and kind of taking a look at this. And you can see, um, even in the liquid cultures, the difference in how each fungus looks, right? And you start noticing these difference, and you see it in different species. You also see it in subtypes of species. So, for example, a pink oyster liquid culture will actually turn the entire thing pink, and it'll build a little pink life raft and sprout pins, right? Fungi want to grow, and they kind of want to do what they want. They do what they want. Is a better example. But anyways, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for pure white. And then after it matures, it may change color, right? If it's blue, green, black, double check it, toss it up, isolate it, right? Now, here's some examples of colonization. This is a lion's mane that was put to this rye berry about a week ago now, right? And as you can see, it's starting to colonize and take to the rye berry. Now, it hasn't gone that far, and I'll show you why. Because the delta between the uh, millet that we use and the nutritional profile of rye is so large that it's taking a little while for the fungus to actually start excreting the right enzymes to match this nutritional profile. This is an example you can see here. This is the same mycelium, lion's mane, uh, rain spawn, millet, and it was put to these wood dowels, and you can see that the hyphae are reaching out and starting to consume the wooden dowels and starting to colonize them. And that's because the fungus is smart enough to reach out and find new food sources. And so it's doing that in both cases, but because the nutritional profile changes, it's gonna have to adjust. It takes a couple of days. Sooner or later, this is what you're gonna get. Or you're gonna get something that looks like this, right? Hopefully you don't get something that looks like that. Anyways, I hope that's sort of explained kind of like what you're looking for with contamination and giving you an example of, you know, different type of growth, right? Um, I find it best uh, rather to assume that something is contamination, I let it grow, right? And I really like to, you know, if I think a liquid culture is contaminated, I'll actually test it two or three times to make sure that it's not just a variable in how I extracted it, uh, the air in the room, did I change the pre-filter? You know, it's I try to slide on the side of the fungus, right? They want to grow, they want to thrive. What we're trying to do is give them the best environment to thrive. Anyways, gotta let you go. I hope that helps. <laughs>